point guard role. They've made plays. You look at Perkins, 20 assists to three turnovers the last two. And then Josh Dick's last two games, career highs in both, averaging 18 a game over that stretch. A sellout, 15,000 on hand, and how about Iowa and <laughs> Owen Freeman giving up six inches yeah. winning the tab. Yeah, winning the night for Iowa right there. <laughs> and the crowd erupted because of it. So these two teams met December 4th at the Big Ten opener. And West Lafayette, Purdue won handily. But a great start for Iowa here. Peyton Sanford from downtown. They can't lose track of him. Just one of six from three at Minnesota. But the two prior, ten of his last 20. That ball goes inside. The double is there. And Braden Smith losing track as Sanford drills it from the top. And nearly a Purdue turnover. You can tell the intensity early from the Hawkeyes is there. Down inside, Edie couldn't get it, got it back. Around the arc, Lawyer, so good with a shot fake. And then he's able to find Jones, but in and out, there's Edie on the putback. That's going to be the game, man. If Iowa can't rebound on the defensive glass, it's going to be a long night. But two offensive boards right there for Zach Edie. He is going to work early. And the basketball back to Purdue on the turnover. Purdue in a little bit of a scramble mode. They did get Edie over to Owen Freeman, and honestly, it's not even a double team. It's just Braden Smith getting lost off the ball. Nice job by Peyton Sanford of getting into the vision of Cricky. He's a shooter. You gotta know where he is at all times. Iowa's been playing well. They've won six of their last seven to get to three and three in Big Ten play. First Purdue, number two in the country. Edie. And they're gonna call it. Too aggressive right there. You're trying to push him off the block, but that's going to be called every time. Tough task for a young freshman at Freeman. You see, he's just tangled up. Edie's trying to turn, and it's tough because Owen Freeman at 6'10", 230, is fighting for his life with 7'4", 300. And Zach Edie, who has been good at free throw shooting, 76% misses the first one. Hey, Fran McCaffrey's already hot over there on the sideline. And congratulations to Fran, all-time winningest coach at Iowa, past Dr. Tom Davis in the win Monday against Minnesota. Well, that's an incredible achievement. You know, the way that Fran McCaffrey has come in here to Iowa City, and I, I got to see the tail end of the, the prior coaching staff because I was playing. And th this was a game where you, you come to Iowa and you were looking at it as a get-right game. And th that is no longer the case. He has turned this program into a perennial NCAA tournament team. They've had first-team All-Americans. You know, they've competed for Big Ten titles. They've won a Big Ten tournament championship. He he has done a phenomenal job here for Iowa. He was on the floor being honored before the game. All four of his kids there, including Patrick McCaffrey on the team still, but injured today with the ankle and out. Up top three, Tony Perkins off the mark, but a tap out by Sanford. Purdue didn't do a great job of offensive rebounding in the game in December. And you, you get Ben Cricky 15 footers, you're, you're playing right into his hands right there. That's exactly what he wants, and Purdue just not getting to him. He is a mid range assassin. He doesn't take many threes, but from 15 to 17 feet, he's money. He double teamed. And Jones needs some help. He might as well just get rid of the center. The, the rule book anymore. I mean, it's lawyer hits the three. That's what you're going to give up. You know, you're showing that much attention to Zach Eady. There's two on him, and you've got Fletcher Lawyer, who's been on fire from three. Now nine of his last 14, all by himself, top of the key. He had all four of them against Indiana. On the other end, what a drive and finish. Tony Perkins using that big 205 pound frame. Lance Jones just falling asleep off the basketball. You get caught ball watching. Nice cut by Tony Perkins. And really, by the time he's caught that thing, he's got a full head of steam already getting to the basket. You talk about embracing the physicality of the game. That's a physical drive. And now an opportunity for three for Tony Perkins. And he will get all three with a senior from Indianapolis. The thing I like about the way he's playing is you, you look at the, the Nebraska game, 15 assists. You look at the game in Wisconsin, he can go for 25. And he, he's a real threat to do a little bit of everything out here. Playing with a real mature feel here for Fran McCaffrey. Braden Smith up top. Edie gathers. But he brought it down to his waist, and they're going to get it for the travel. 
Well, that pass is a little bit better from Braden Smith. That's a really hard action to guard. You got Trey Kaufman Wren ducking in on that help defender, and there's nobody home for Edie. That pass just a little bit wild from Braden Smith. Edie couldn't corral it. Now we're going the other way. Purdue doesn't have many Achilles heels, but turnovers, that has been one of them at times this year. I'm looking forward to see how they handle Iowa's cutting. I thought Iowa and the win in Minnesota was just outstanding off the ball. And Perkins, who has really been playing well, drops down a 15-footer. Uh, Iowa took care of Minnesota 86-77 on Monday to get to 3-3 three and three in Big Ten play. Edie, deep post touch, and he puts it home. It's just nothing you can do. These post feeds from the top are going to make it really hard. Owen Freeman is basically by himself, and just left shoulder, bread and butter move for Edie. Short from Josh Dix into the hands of Jones. For doing that drop coverage, that that's what you're going to have. You're going to have pull-up jumpers available. Braden Smith trying to get it inside. He does. Kaufman Wren, two more. Braden Smith is so patient. He comes to a jump stop. He never panics. Scans the floor and just finds Trey Kaufman Wren. Trey Kaufman Wren had 23 a few games ago against Illinois. And then it's been quiet, but a good bucket there. And on the other end, it's Owen Freeman. That side is totally emptied out. Two-man game. And Owen Freeman, he can put it on the floor. They want to move Edie, and that's what they did there. The two top offenses in the Big Ten going neck and neck here early. Coffin Ren feels he's got the advantage on Cricky coming over to help those Freeman. Oh, such a lure for the shot that right there. And then a whistle and a foul on Iowa. First time out of the game. Well, Tony Perkins with five early points. You're coming off the ball screen. The pull-ups are going to be there. We're doing that drive. It would be nice for them to get a quad one victory, a big opportunity for that today. They do not have one of those, does Iowa, on the season. I think, you know, some of those numbers are who you've played at home. And those numbers will certainly evolve as you get deeper into Big Ten play. Porter's with it out of the timeout. Bad pass by Mason Gillis. It's Tony Perkins time. Good has Tony Perkins been early doing it on both ends. He just shoots right through there. He has competed here early. He's got seven of the 14 for Iowa. Cross court alone is lawyer short. Iowa showing multiple bodies and they're making that ball skip. And right now you, you can see that they are going to live with Purdue shooting threes, much like Nebraska did. Nebraska, one of Purdue's two losses this year. The other one coming at Northwestern back in December. Sanford, step back three. Pretty good defense by Lawyer. He's got one of the quicker releases in college basketball. Fletcher Lawyer doing a pretty nice job there, just staying in that play and getting a quality contest. Smith over the top to Zach Eady. Boy, it's such a tough action because Mason Gillis has shot the ball so well. He's raising behind. Edie's rolling to the rim. And just a little look off by Braden Smith freezes Cricky. Edie already with seven and three boards. Here's the freshman, Freeman. Six-time Big Ten freshman of the week. Kicks it out. Cricky off the mark. Long rebound to Ethan Morton. Smith. So good at surveying, finding his sophomore mate lawyer. He hits the underside of the goal. A little bit out of control there by Fletcher Lawyer. Sanford on the baseline drive. You take a bad shot, and Iowa does not need any help to get out on the break and run. Off of that, the Hawkeyes taking advantage. Peyton Sanford finding that thing on the baseline. Back into the big fella. This time, no good. Gillis came in to grab it, and he got pushed. And that's a foul on Ben Cricky. Iowa's defense helping their offense. Just a sloppy pass from Gillis, and Tony Perkins is shooting right through, going up and throwing down. You take a wild one. And that's just Fletcher Lawyer getting caught in the air. And now Peyton Sanford giving it up early. And Josh Dix doing a nice job of getting it right back to him, driving off the closeout. 
using your size and just finished over the top of Braden Smith. Iowa leads the Big Ten in fast break points. Top ten of the country in that category. Edi, that got disrupted. Raji Dimbele off the bench with good defense. And it's Perkins. There's Dimbele. Boy, he got a great look. I thought he did some really positive things at Minnesota. He missed that layup, but he's given Fran McCaffrey some good minutes. One of four freshmen in the rotation for Fran McCaffrey. You don't see that these days in college basketball. Good pull up from Fletcher Lawyer. I think Fran McCaffrey's got a core that you can certainly build around. Now you got to keep them in today's era of college basketball, but you look at this freshman class. There's some real talent and some real cohesion. And then there's a pretty good junior in Peyton Sanford. What an offensive start to this game. Both teams shooting above 50%. From the field, Iowa now at 62, 8 and 13 from the field. And Sanford has seven. That would off the mark for Braden Smith. Braden Smith has kind of lost his jumper for his last 20. And he struggled against Indiana. Tricky in and out of the mid range. But whether it's Smith, Lawyer, whoever, this Purdue team can fill it up from deep almost 40% collectively from beyond the arc. I do like that with Braden Smith, some of his shooting troubles, he's still been doing just that. You know, the assist numbers have been there. Six plus assists and now seven straight games coming into today. And what a skip pass there. Mason Gillis just continues to be on fire. He already has three assists here this afternoon. Purdue back within one. Sanford. And a rebound to Smith. Picked off on that screen. Sanford got a great look. Smith curls it around to Ethan Morton, who rarely shoots, but he puts one up here, and it goes down. It's just his fourth point in the last four games. He's out there to defend, play hard, move the ball. But it's always Braden Smith with that initial surge, putting real pressure on that defense. That was only for Ethan Morton, the sixth made field goal this season for the senior, and now he gets a steal. This is what he can do, defend. And Smith follows it up. You love that Braden Smith just didn't just assume that that was going to be a made bucket. DeSante Bone with the contest. But how about Ethan Morton giving great minutes for Purdue on the road? A quick 7-0 run in less than a minute for Matt Painter's club. Dimbele, not normally his thing, off the mark from three. And a whistle and a foul against Iowa. Timeout here in Iowa City. Number two ranked team in the land, up by three. Big Ten over the last handful of years to where now Purdue is kind of the team that opposing fan bases circle. It, yeah. It's almost like the Super Bowl for a lot of other no, teams. I mean, you look at the, the court storming numbers, and Chris Foreman has them in the notes. When they lose, they, they more often than not, I think it's like nine out of ten have have had the court storm, so it it's become that, and that's a credit to Matt Painter and the success that they've had. All right, Heidi into the game. Cam Heidi with the basketball here, young freshman. I thought in the first meeting, Purdue just punished Iowa for pressing. Whenever Iowa brought their full court pressure, they, they weren't just breaking it to get it across. They, they were breaking it to score. And Purdue would win that game handily, and now it's a 10-0 run for the Boilers. That was Lance Jones. I think Lance Jones is coming off his best game as a Boilermaker. The way he played and kind of set the tone alongside Edie at Assembly Hall, 17 points. He shot the ball from three. It's a big-time shot and a shot clock. Double figures in five straight for number 5-5, five, five, Lance Jones. And then there's a careless turnover on the wide pass. It's one of the more difficult passes to throw in there. Here's Lance Jones with that press. Purdue not getting into their offense until you know, 17 or 18 on the clock, and now it's just time for players to make plays. It's a big one there by Jones. Purdue 10 of 18 from the floor, 3 of 6 from long range. One of the best shooting teams in college basketball. Gillis will line one up. That went off the bar. But an offensive rebound. Heidi had it blocked. Brock Harding, one of the freshmen in the rotation the other way. Freeman in some trouble. And a loose ball picked up by Purdue. Jones, full head of steam. Euro step. 
My goodness, what a sequence on both ends. Purdue finally scores it. Boy, the way that Lance Jones pushes the ball, it just gives Purdue a different dynamic than what they've had. He puts so much pressure. And whether he's running the floor or he's got the ball in his hands. I love the way that First and Cam Heidi run in the floor as well. And once again, Purdue getting to the offensive glass. They've now got eight offensive rebounds. And what was once an Iowa lead after a great start, now Purdue is on a 14 to nothing run, and they're up a or 12 nothing run rather. And here's a whistle and a foul inside on Purdue. They're going to get Trey Kaufman rim. Just the second foul on Purdue, and something to keep track of is they foul the least amount in the Big Ten. Here's Harding, the freshman from Moline, Illinois. Finding Cricky, and Cricky will head to the line. Really good off the ball. You know, Trey Kaufman Wren is given help there. As you've got the roller making his way to the rim, and Cricky just finding the open area. Watch Owen Freeman kind of roll. You got Kaufman Wren just camping out. He's guarding Ben Cricky. Cricky making himself available. Nice cut. Turns a trip to the foul line. Fifth year senior was the MVC leading scorer last year at Valparaiso at over 19 points a game. I mentioned that he doesn't shoot a ton of threes, but the mid range game, he's crafty around the basket. He's a really good college player. Well, you just never know what's going to happen when you take a step up. And you come from the, the Valley, which is a great league, but you come into the Big Ten. And still, 15 of 17 games this year in double figures. 16 of his last 24 from the field. He's been efficient. He just knows how to play. And he is really fitting well with his Iowa Hawkeye bunch. Pretty good free throw shooter, but missing both there. And now Smith makes it a 14 to nothing run. He just never stops the ball there. And Braden Smith found his way all the way to the basket. And all of a sudden, the Boilers up double figures. This has been quite the response from Purdue. You know, Iowa playing fast, made their run, and it's just been all Purdue the last four minutes. Finally, Iowa able to get the lid off the basket. Lockhart can pass. There's no doubt about that. He's got to find some confidence in his jumper, but he drops some dimes out here. He averages over three assists a game and only plays 13 minutes. Here he's defending the basketball. Trey Coffin Ren can't get it. Caleb first with that left hand. Purdue is just butchering Iowa on the glass. Oh, Iowa got it up quickly, but Freeman with a miss at the rim. It's a good rim run, too. That's the thing with Iowa. Even on a made basket, if you're not getting back, they, they are looking to throw that thing up the floor. Yeah, but you said it with a rebounding. 18 to 6 right now in favor of Purdue. Jones will line it up, and he hits the bounce. <laughs> but Purdue is just flexing their muscles right now with how many weapons and how many different ways they can beat you. Can Iowa stop the bleeding here? Brock Harding way too much. Talked about some of his struggle shooting. Now 2 of 18 from the field over the last six games. Former Illinois Mr. Basketball. Way off there, and now Purdue a chance to add to the lead, but this won't help. It's an offensive foul on Trey Kaufman Rim. Brayden Smith has been struggling a little bit with his scoring, but today looking for his own offense. Owen Free. Where Purdue maybe didn't do a great job getting back on a made one, but they, they have got to rebound the basketball. 20 to 6 on the glass, and only eight second chance points for Purdue, but they've just gotten so many more cracks at it with their. Way that they've just gotten on there. See what Iowa can do here out of the timeout. They go to Freeman. He drives it right at Edie, but he rejects it. He took that contact and just stayed right in the play. Most guys are going back. Owen Freeman, he can move Edie, he can drive Edie, but good defense there by the reigning national player of the year, moving his feet and staying in the play. Jones gets another open look. That one off the mark. He almost got his own rebound. Look at the hustle from Heidi. They're going to call the foul, I believe, on Heidi. Yes. Matt Painter has got to love the effort. Purdue just flying around. We talked the offensive glass. Camden Heidi getting on that ball. Boy, I, I think that ball is still loose. I, I think that if Tony Perkins has secured it, 
then that could be a loose ball foul, but I don't think he actually had possession there. Five team fouls now on Purdue. Uh, now six team fouls. They're going to get Heidi. He just picked up two fouls in ten seconds. So the freshman from up north in Minnesota frustrated. And two free throws for Tony Perkins. Matt Painter, four-time Big Ten Coach of the Year. Mentioned all those Big Ten wins. What a job he's done, and he's got this Purdue team. Number two in the country, 16-2 and two overall. It blows my mind that this is his 20th year at Purdue. And even Fran McCaffrey in his 14th year live. Think about how long these guys have been at these respective jobs. Now that Tom Izzo, no one has been at a school in the Big Ten Conference as long as Matt Painter has. And to see him kind of go from being one of the young up-and-coming coaches in this league to now one of the elder statesmen, it truly is incredible. And he is chasing Gene Cady. He's at his taps. And it will stay with Purdue. But Gene Cady, 512 wins during his time on the Purdue sideline. And Matt Painter now 429 in climbing. Oh, going to zone here. And Purdue goes with a high low, big to big action. The execution there, just getting to that high low. And that's what Purdue's been looking for all afternoon long. They've been flashing their four to that high post, top of the key area. And Zach Eady doing his thing on these middle post ups. He got a couple of blocks to boot, but Freeman clings it all up. A good looking freshman at Owen Freeman. No doubt about that. Six time Big Ten freshman of the week. Look at his numbers in Big Ten play. Uh, it's no mirage for what he's doing on the year. 12 and 7 in conference games. Boy, they've got to stop the three ball though on the other end. That time it's Lawyer. <laughs> Purdue 5 of 10 from deep. Cricky with a 15 footer. Said this earlier, but he truly is the assassin of the mid range. You don't see too many guys looking for that shot, but. I love that Ben Cricky understands his strength. If he's not there in the post, he'll go dribble handoffs. He's looking for his 15-footer. And on the other end, almost to travel in the lane. Around to Jones. He will pull off the dribble. And a rebound to Tony Perkins. I love that shot to Lance Jones. I know he can make that, but off balance, he can get something better with 11 on the clock. Iowa trying to get back into this ball game. They've got to play with tempo, and there it's got it starts with their defense though. They've got to get stops They've got to get on the defensive glass when they do that they can run and they're a different team And they're gonna get a foul on Owen Freeman of Iowa tangling inside with Zach Eady seen this all game long and Purdue got a lot of these middle post ups in the initial meeting back on December 4th There's the flash to the high post. You got the duck in It's a simple game, but so effective when you got a guy with Zach Eady's size and ability That was the second foul on Owen Freeman. So he goes to the bench and Dembele back in for Iowa Gillis open look. Iowa dodged a bullet, but Purdue grabs another offensive board. Well, we welcome those of you that just saw a thriller. Creighton winning by three in triple overtime. We've had a good game here so far. Number two, Purdue leading Iowa in Iowa City, 38-29. Jim Belle with a 15-footer. The Iowa bigs have shown that they can stretch, stretch the defense to 15 feet or so. We've seen Cricky do it. Now Dembele doing it. And finally, this crowd here at Carver-Hawkeye getting into the game. And it stripped, and it went off of Purdue. Hawkeyes getting back in it on a 7 nothing run, and they'll have the ball when we get back. The year, but now he is a starter. He is a go-to guy and really become a key player for Fran McCaffrey. 
How about a triple overtime game ahead of us with Creighton and Seton Hall? We, we become that, that's our deal. You know, if we're coming on air, we, we know that we're not getting the game until late. That's happened to us what three times this year or this week. I mean, but from the Big East down to the Big Ten, we appreciate everyone joining us here. Great Saturday afternoon in Iowa City for some college basketball. Two of the most electric offenses, not only in the Big Ten, but in the country. These two teams fill it up both over 85 points a game. I love Iowa's cutting. I thought they carved Minnesota Monday night. And they have certainly made themselves available. That's a good cut, but an errant pass there from Ben Crickey. Hawkeye turnover. Each team with four miscues so far here this afternoon. Looking for Edie, there he is, what a feed. Credit that to Braden Smith. And that real deep pick and roll is so hard to defend. If you're not gonna trap it, there, there's just not much space. You've got Fletcher Lawyer popping out and two Hawkeye defenders go with him. Edie all by himself at the rim. And Braden Smith, five assists, no turnovers so far for the sophomore. Dembele in and out, Purdue rebound. Nice job by Edie though, getting a contest there. Jones baseline drive again. It's Edie and he gets fouled and this crowd Quickly lets their feelings be known They did not like that call Lance Jones just put so much pressure Talked about how good he can be in transition and they're throwing it up the floor Boy that, that is all ball right there from Cricky and that's a tough break for Iowa because now, Rob, not only do you have Cricky with two, remember Freeman's you also have Freeman. Well. Yeah, so Freeman's on the bench. Cricky's going to go join him as little used Evan Bronze, 6'9 center, will come into the game. You do a Purdue game, you got to make sure you have every possible big <laughs> on the, whatever you use to call the game because everyone is in play. Now a foul on Purdue going for the rebound. But the Boilers have pushed the lead back to double digits. They've led by as many as 14 here in the first half. 17 foul, so a one and one for Laji Dimbele, the true freshman from West Africa. It is so rare these days in college basketball to see four true freshmen. In the rotation, but that's what Fran McCaffrey has on his ball club. We talked about this earlier. It's going to be important to keep this core together, but there's some really nice young pieces here in Iowa City. Fran McCaffrey's done a great job of finding some guys that fit what he wants to do, and you keep them together for a couple years, and this group can certainly grow together and get better together. And they'll get the basketball back after Purdue's fifth turnover of the afternoon. Fran McCaffrey, he's got his team off to a 3-3 three three start in big play. They lost their first three games, including in West Lafayette back on December 4th, but they have righted the ship. They've won six of their last seven overall. Tony Perkins, and wait, offensive foul. They're going to get Sanford, and that's his second. Got him for an illegal screen. Rob Kuhneman saying that he just kind of rolled through on this handoff. Oh, yeah. It's amazing when you watch players argue calls and he's telling them, man, I, I didn't move on that. I, I was set. <laughs> you can never trust the players. It's yeah. just the moral of the story. Well, the tape won't lie. So, three guys with two fouls for Iowa. That's a big developing story. My goodness. What a pass. Braden Smith finding Jones. But ultimately, Iowa gets away with it. And then Gillis, he stole it right back. And he finds Braden Smith, who lobs for Edie. The interior passing by Purdue on display right there. How about the instincts, though? Mason Gillis, like a defensive back, just picking that thing off. And then unselfish basketball, multiple passes in that paint, and it finishes with an Edie slam. And Perkins can't get it to go. Edie had it. And it is a foul. It's on Dembele, so we will walk to the other end for free throws. Iowa wants to get out, and they want to run, but you, you can't turn it over. Dembele just trying to outlet this thing. Mason Gillis picking off the outlet pass. And now just unselfish. Bounce pass to Smith, throw it up to Edie, and let him do his thing. 
you know, Matt Painter has a lot of praise for many of his guys, but Mason Gill is certainly at the top of that list. Fifth year senior who used to start, now he comes off the bench, still plays a lot of minutes, but just a fantastic asset. You talk to coaches around the league, and they do marvel at the way that Purdue's players have bought into their role. I mean, you've got Ethan Morton, who started a lot of games for Purdue. You've got Mason Gillis, same thing. Caleb First, same situation. All three of those guys have been starters in their time in West Lafayette. But I think you look at guys that are giving it up for the greater good of the team, and you've got guys coming off the bench who would play big minutes in other places. But that's what makes this Purdue team so tough. A testament to the culture that Matt Painter has built over the last couple of decades. Well, the Boilers have matched their largest lead here. Josh Dix into bronze, kicking it out. Catch and release. That's Price Sanford. That's Peyton's brother, and his first shot goes down. A big shot for him. Just two points for the last three games. One of his last seven from the field. But has that reputation of a big-time shooter. Iowa needed that one. Matt Painter is going to take the timeout. Well, Zach Eady 16 and 6 here tonight. But last two games, he was Purdue. You know, no doubt about that. Depending on how many games Purdue plays, I think it, you have to point out Rick Mount did that in three seasons. The, yes. And without the three point line, <laughs> That's which true. is pretty remarkable. I just think the impact that Edie has, the foul trouble he puts his opponents in, I was dealing with that right now. But then his efficiency. I mean, the last two games, he's only been at 60% from the field, which for most guys is like, hey, that's great. But for him, that's that's kind of that's kind of down, which is crazy. Not a three-second difference here. Shot game clock. Lawyer. Look at that seal. Blew right by and yeah, Edie used that big body. And now a timeout by Fran McCaffrey. Boy, Fletcher Lawyer's consistency the last three games has really started to stand out. And he's getting heated up by Price Sanford. He just whips him off any post trap because there's no weak side. But this is a complete team. There's a reason that they have beat the teams that they have and you know, sit at the number two team in the country as we speak. Four seconds left for Iowa. Getting it into Tony Perkins. Racing ahead, popping, and leaving it short. And Purdue, who controlled most of the first half, puts up 47 points and leads by 13. That's a pretty good 20 minutes on the road for the Boilermaker. Well, Purdue will have the basketball to start the second half. Okay, if I was going to come back, obviously the glass you said is key. What else are you watching? Well, I, I just think that they are at their best when they are playing with some tempo. And you, you don't have the sixth fastest tempo in all college basketball and not excel when you do it. So that, that comes with getting stops, but they need to get out in the open floor and, and run Zach Eady. Lawyer, open look. And Iowa able to escape. Tony Perkins got off to a great start tonight. Did kind of cool off, but what a run right to the rim. Boy, Purdue just not stopping the basketball, and finally Iowa gets a stop, and Tony Perkins able to get all the way to the front of the rim. Perkins in double figures now with 11. Jones, you can't leave him. Oh, body's crashing to the floor. They're going to get a foul against Tony Perkins of Iowa. Lance Jones did a great job of, of relocating to the top of the key. Braden Smith, if you're open, he'll find you. Fran McCaffrey doesn't like the call. How can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> and Trey Kaufman Wren tangled up and multiple Hawkeye defenders. But Purdue got a couple of open looks to start the second half and missed it. Here's Shot the goes reason. up and well, boy, that could be a hook and hold, honestly. I mean, Tony Perkins has has the arm of Trey Kaufman Wren. Just the first personal on Perkins. Edie, great position. Count the bucket and the foul. And if that is on Owen Freeman, and it is, that's his third. Edie's just rolling, and look at the way that Lance Jones picks off Freeman there with his cut. It's not like he's supposed to screen on the play. That's just him going and kind of making a play on his own. Freeman's then behind, and it, it is so difficult when you are so overmatched from a size perspective. You're, you're just fighting for your life, and a lot of times when you do that, you end up fouling because you're giving up so much weight. 
Well, Owen Freeman, such a key piece. As Robbie said, six-time Big Ten freshman of the week, but he's now on the bench with three fouls. This is their leader, Tony Perkins. Giving it up. Cricky, the transfer. And he draws the foul on Zach Eady. That is only the first on the Purdue Big Ben. That was a nice job by Cricky of utilizing that shot fake. And Zach Eady normally is pretty good at staying disciplined, staying down. But he got him off balance, and that's what Iowa's going to try to do. Put Zach Eady in space, drive him, and try to get him in foul trouble. It is hard to do, though. You go back to Zach Eady's freshman year. Now he's a senior, but as a freshman, he averaged over six fouls per 40 minutes. He has got that down, Robbie, to just over two fouls per 40 minutes. Well, he was so raw when he got into college. You know, he just hadn't played basketball for all that long, and that's why we've seen him improve in, in these massive quantum leaps instead of fine-tuning his game. You know, so much has been talked about. <laughs> to get the hockey, the baseball, yes. you know, he played these other sports. <laughs> But I, I just think the way that he has grown from an IQ standpoint, from a skill level standpoint, from a movement standpoint, it, it's been remarkable to see his transformation. Did not pick up a basketball until his sophomore year at high school. The 429th ranked recruit in his class and now reigning national player of the year. Smith right to the rim. Edie had his hands on it. Everybody hitting the deck. And Iowa gets it. One of the foul there on Lance Jones. Perkins stops and pops. Yes. That's a physical, physical play right there by Tony Perkins. You know, Lance Jones is going to bring the contact, but Perkins embracing that, keeping him on a side. And we said it in the first half, but drop coverage, that shot's going to be there. Tony Perkins trying to get that momentum to swing back in Iowa's favor. Smith over the top, dangerous, but it got there and he does the rest. I'm telling you, so many point guards would panic when they have picked up their dribble, but Braden Smith is so calm, cool, and collected. We got some water, I think, dripping on the floor. Yeah. There's a lot of snow outside. Yep, they wiped up a spot on the other side of the floor, and now there's one to our left here. And official Jeffrey Anderson noticed it. Well, it's interesting because I. I don't want to call it a tarp, but like you have the roof, and then there is kind of a open area. Where it, it, what would you describe that as? <laughs> it's it's, it's like a, tarp, a circus tent. Yeah, a circus tent like. is a good way to put it. You know, the, the top kind of has a different structural aspect to it, and there, there's a lot of snow outside. Well, there's well over a foot, and it has been out there for a while. A lot of weight coming down on the top of this building. Perkins drives. What a finish over 7-4, Zach Eady. No kidding right there. Tony Perkins, again, a physical take. Zach Eady going vertical. Not easy to finish over the top, but Perkins does it there. That ball was deflected and taken away. Josh Dix. What a recovery by Lance Jones. He, he should have given that up. He had Perkins run on the floor, and Dix just missed him. And Jones on the other end. And he draws the foul on Dimbele. Two free throws coming. Tony Perkins has been aggressive here in this second half. Snake in the pick and roll. Could have got Edie for that initial contact. I thought on the shot it was certainly clean. There's that bump. And Perkins is initiating a lot of that contact as well. But then as he goes up, that Perkins off arm, it's just a strong take and a weight room bucket for Tony Perkins. Tony Perkins, senior from Indianapolis, and Fran McCaffrey said in the offseason, look, he has sat behind some good players and good leaders here. Now it's his turn to yeah. be the leader of this and I think he has the ability to be an all-conference player in this league. I mean, he's got the physical tools. It's just about putting them all together. And we talked to start this game. The fact that he can get 15 assists against Nebraska but still put 25 points up at Wisconsin, that's, that's impressive. This crowd has grown more frustrated with the whistles here today. They do call one there on Lance Jones. Iowa 
Iowa has won six of their last seven. They got down big in the first half, trying to fight back. Pretty good look there from Sanford. But Jones saved it. Braden Smith with the ball. Seven assists, no turnovers. Well, one turnover on that last possession. Needy got it, and a foul on the floor, and it's going against Iowa. We've seen this a couple times today, but this time it's Trey Kaufman Red who's just sealing his defender. These Purdue bigs have pretty much just cleared out Iowa's help defense. And that is paved the way. Zach Eady, 21 points, 8 rebounds. And my, does he get to the line a lot. That's his 8th free throw attempt here today. He's at 188 on the season. 50 more, Robbie, than anybody else in the conference. He leads the country in free throws attempted. Also leads the Big Ten free throws made, offensive rebound, scoring, rebounding, field goal <laughs> percentage. I mean, it's just like this dude is hes a generational player. You don't see guys put up the numbers that he has, much like you know, Luca Garza was a generational player at Aqua. Luca Garza's numbers up in the Raptors now in the NBA. And Zach Eady, you would have to think his number someday soon will be hanging in the Mackey Raptors. It's not a matter of if, but a matter of when. When. Yeah. I like what Tony Perkins is doing here. I mean, he's putting the onus on the officials to call fouls with these physical takes to the rim. Not settling for jumpers. He's looking to get to the basket. That's the second foul on Eady. Tony Perkins leads Iowa and steals an assist, third on the team and score. One of two. Bad pass from Jones, and it's going back to the Hawkeyes. Seventh turnover for Purdue today. Well, Lance Jones got to the, the worst place that you want to be when you break that pressure. You stop when you cross half court. You're putting yourself in a world of hurt. That, that ball's got to move before you cross the timeline. I think we might have some... <laughs> Some water delays here. Once again, mopping some of this uh, water leaking onto the floor up here. Yeah, both sides of the floor have a spot just outside the three-point arc that they're continually monitoring. And now the Purdue bench is seeing some, and so is the Iowa bench on the other side of the court. I kind of think of the Metrodome. <laughs> yes. Because I was in Minneapolis when that uh, snow kind of collapsed the roof there. Well, hopefully hope that, that does not occur yeah, today. Let's hope that we don't have anything like that today at Carver Hawkeye Arena. 15,000 on hand, another sellout, as it usually is here. Perkins leaning, two more for Tony Perkins. He's got 18. Somebody's got to come alongside Tony Perkins. I mean, he is doing almost everything here. These first four minutes of the second half, he's taking it on himself. He is living in the paint. Trying to keep Iowa close. Purdue's led by as many as 14 on several occasions. But Purdue lucky to not turn it over, and then they do turn it over. Peyton Sanford stopping, topping short. And this crowd was ready to explode. Sanford takes some really tough shots. I know he can make those, but. Over the top, here's Edie. Good kick out. Jones, extra pass to Smith. Eddie buries it. That's a big sequence right there. Yes, it is. And you throw it inside, you get Iowa in rotation, you swing the ball around the horn. It's just good offense from Purdue. Purdue, the best three point shooting team in the conference, almost 40%. And they're 6 of 15 from outside the arc today. Perkins can't get that one. He'll stop and pop again. This one is short. Look at Edie flying through, saving the possession. That is a grown man rebound by Zach Edie. That's one where Braden Smith would be wise to shoot that basketball. That's a tough pass right at the feet of Trey Kaufman Red. Offense on both sides. Tony Perkins has been the guy for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Just getting to here in assist per game. That leads the Big Ten in assists in conference play. He's just become one of the Really good floor generals, and not just the league, but in all of college basketball. Indiana Mr. Basketball two years ago at Westfield High School in the Indianapolis area. Cricky, left hand. And a strong rebound by Gillis. 
It's a good look for Cricky. Two-man game, get to his left hand. Take that shot if you're Iowa all day long. Purdue right now has matched their largest lead of the afternoon at 14. Smith always with his head on a swivel. Triple team came around the arc. Ethan Morton way too much. That's the guy that I was going to leave. You're right. There was three bodies around Edie. Ethan Morton getting a wide open shot. There's Cricky again with that strong left hand off balance. Mason Gillis did a great job of walling up right there. He just went straight vertical and made Cricky score over the top. Gillis is strong. 6'6, 225. But again, he's battle tested. I mean, he started so many games. They're going to get a foul on Iowa underneath here. I think they called a double foul. The third on Dimbele, number 13 for Iowa. Did, didn't Jeffrey Anderson signal it double foul? Looked like he did. You're right, but it, ultimately he went over and said just a foul on Dimbele. You can see he's just pulling Andy's arm down. But I swore that he signaled for the double foul. And they did. You're right. Okay, was, yeah, but I, it didn't look like he signaled it into the scores table. Gillis hits the three after Edie picks up foul number three. Purdue has done a great job today. When Edie's not been on the floor, there, there's not been drop off in their offense. You know, at times, you could say, where do they go? But today, that has certainly not been, a, been the problem or the case at all. Oh, Dembele fell awkwardly. And he is down. If he took a shot. Maybe it was a lower leg injury, but either way, Laji Dembele is clearly in some pain. Oh, just, oh man, he rolls that ankle. Iowa in the first half in that game. You know, they led 45-24 at halftime. The points in the paint were, were a massive differential. The offensive glass played a role as well. And Iowa got Purdue on the boards in West Lafayette, too. And they had 16 offensive rebounds themselves. But Purdue, it just, they coasted in that one. And they certainly put on a, a show here on the road as well today. Zach Eady getting a breather right now with those three fouls. Lawyer off balance, but he got it to go. You're Josh Dix, you can't guard that any better. That's just Fletcher Lawyer better offense going and making something happen off the bounce. Lawyer's got a dozen. Dix on the other end for three. A guy that's coming off a career high at Minnesota had 21 there. It's been quiet today. That's his first bucket of the game. The last two games, you put that Minnesota game with the one before 37 points for Dix. I was going to get the ball back here. Maybe that will ignite Josh Dix. Tony Perkins doesn't need any ignition. He kicks it out, and Sanford buries the three. What a find by Tony Perkins. Again, in transition, that's where I was at their best. A little Euro step, get to the left side of the floor, and he finds Peyton Sanford locked and loaded. Lawyer stopping on a dime. Can't up first. Patient. Can't get it. A right bucket here. If Matt Painter might take a timeout. Perkins. Gonna slow it up. Now drive it on Gillis. Finds Cricky. This is his shot. Wait, Tony Perkins just taking that temperature of the Purdue defense. Not there initially, but it's there on the second drive, and that's not an easy pass. You're throwing that across the grain, but back across his body, and he finds Ben Cricky from 15. 8 0 run. Lawyer stops, deflected. Sanford almost took it the other way. Under 12 media timeout. Hawkeyes trying to claw back in it. An 8-0 run for Iowa here. It's in transition. Will we ever win a game in this league ever again? And it can it can overwhelm you. So that they have certainly weathered the storm. 
know, their schedule has been more favorable, I would say, over the last three. But you, you got to hold serve at home, and, and you've got to beat the teams that, you know, you're, you're above. And I think Iowa's done that. Out of the inbounds pass, Heidi got a wide open look. Edie back in the game. Oh, he missed the dunk. But he was able to tap it back. Purdue keeps it. Remember, Edie playing with three fouls. Jones curling, firing, burying. But Josh Dick's going under, and, and Lance Jones, even though his percentage says just 33% from three, it's been a different deal now the last three games. Coming into tonight, the last two, six of 14. You go under on him. He's going to be aggressive and look for his offense. Now that scored over 1,500 points during his career at Southern Illinois. He can fill it up. Sanford got fouled, and he will have three at the strike. We've seen Camden Heidi have this happen. I believe it was the Nebraska game where, where he he's locking and trailing but not letting the shooter land. Peyton Sanford's coming off the screen. You're a little bit behind. And maybe I think there was probably some contact there on that elbow. And then as Sanford came down, it was an uncomfortable landing. So three now on the redshirt freshman Heidi. And three free throws for Peyton Sanford. Sanford, who has seen his role grow every year, five points per game as a freshman, 10 as a sophomore. Now he's up just south of 15 points a game. But a lot of these guys had to sit behind some All-Americans. Four straight years that Iowa's had an All-American between Luca Garza and then the Murray brothers, Keegan and Chris. Well, this year's team also has had to see players that last year were role guys alongside Chris Murray. And now, you know, like Tony Perkins is an alpha dog. He, he was a complimentary piece last year. That takes some time. Philip Abrach has moved on. He was a good player. Now, Iowa's really had to retool. Edie feeding Kaufman Wren with a nice hook. It's, just, it's so hard to guard. Two on Edie. Kaufman Wren is diving to the rim, and when he gets to his right hand, that's what he wants. Every time Iowa tries to inch closer, Purdue finds a way to get a big bucket. Here's Perkins again. Got it. He's been fabulous. He just, he's under control. He's making plays. And Lance Jones is a very good perimeter defender, and he has... Certainly won those battles off the bounce. 20 now for Perkins. Edie, great position, two-hand flush. I think Purdue is as good as any team in the country at middle post-up feeds. I mean, they just take away that post-trap option. Edie's ducking in, and Trey kaufman Ren is zipping that thing in there. Edie, 25 and 10. 51st career double-double for the big fella. Dicks. Nice wrap around to Freeman. With hesitation, though. He throws that defender. Almost looked like maybe he palmed it. You don't see the carry called all that often. I, I thought he might raise up, but and it was just to the rim, and what a dime to Owen Freeman. They're trying to stay engaged here in Iowa City. 15,000 strong on hand at Carver Hawkeye. Double for Edie. Cross court. Pass. There's Smith. And a rebound to Iowa. Perkins finding Cricky in the mid-range. And there's a foul. That was, that was a nasty fall for Trey Kaufman Wren. Kaufman Wren reaching quickly down to the bottom part of that left leg. It was so awkward to see him go down like that. For Iowa, we saw Laji Dembele twist his ankle in that exact same spot about 10 minutes ago, and he left for the training room. Meanwhile, it's the fourth foul on the freshman Owen Freeman, who's had a frustrating afternoon for Iowa. He's glass. He, he can make a post move. The, the, the four men for Purdue have just kind of rotated. Whoever's playing well, good, good to see him kind of walk this off. That, that looked really nasty. It's just so awkward the way that leg bent. Yeah. Let's hope that he's okay. Purdue forges on, up 11 here. Braden Smith from 18 feet. 
been a drop coverage killer. And that's exactly what I was in there. But he was a little bit off balance at times with his pull up at Indiana, but they're straight up and down, and that, that's a big shot for Purdue for that Trey Kaufman run injury. Look at those numbers, bottom left of your screen. Braden Smith, a little bit of everything. Dix on the drive, right by Edie, right by Gillis. Smart by Josh Dix. I, I thought he might settle for the three, but then he just put it on the floor and got all the way to the basket. This game has really settled into that 8 to 13 point range. Teams going back and forth to high octane offenses in Purdue and Iowa. Smith drives. He finds Heidi. Heidi on the offensive glass and the foul on Bronze. Under eight, Heidi a timeout. Heidi of the Boilers up 11. Jackson Davis. Boy, the way that Jordan Murphy rebounded the basketball, he, he's one of the underrated players and rebounders of the last 20 years in the Big Ten. That, that dude was unbelievable. And Dennis Rodman here in the conference. I was just going to say he had a Rodman like nose for the yeah, basketball. He just, man, he, he played so hard. But this guy, Zach Eady, is just 40 away from 2000 in his career. When he gets there, he'll be the sixth boiler ever to reach that mark. And he knocks down one of two. In that timeout, good to see Trey Kaufman Rand come back to the bench because it certainly looked ugly as he went down to the floor. Yeah, he is sitting over there. He was trying to walk, still walking a little gingerly. We'll see if he comes back in the game. Perkins gobbles it up, left hand, and he got it to go. Boy, it's just been all about Tony Perkins getting to the basket. We, we've seen it all second half long. He's not settling for jumpers. He is getting to the rim. The senior from Indianapolis with 22 points. Down inside to Edie. Out of the double team, around the arc to Lawyer. And back in, Edie gets two more. Well, Purdue knows where their bread is buttered. I think Braden Smith could have taken that three. I think Fletcher Lawyer could have taken that three. But you pass up on a good look to get a great one at the rim. Unselfish play. And Zach Edie again with great post position. Purdue back up 12. Iowa cannot seem to get it within eight. And a great block there by Edie. Back down into that well. Edie patient. Around the arc. Lawyer open three. Gillis there for the board. On the reload. Lawyer thought about it. Purdue always so smart. Always so patient. Edie right around bronze. And he'll head to the line for two. See, the, the double team had come to Edie. The ball swings. Fletcher Lawyer could have taken that. He's making his way to another 30-point double-double. Should be his third straight. You know how hard it is to get 30 and 10 in a Big Ten game? I know, but the number of people who have done that, it, it is an incredibly short list. But it becomes so normal with him that you kind of take it for granted. Yeah, and we talked about Jordan Murphy, how, how his rebounding became, you know, he's got 18 rebounds. Well, that's normal. You know, he does that. Zach Eady gets he gets 30. He does he does that. He missed the second, so he's sitting on 29 and 12. Both of these teams shooting just under 50%. And there's a blocking foul on Jones. Perkins initiated the contact. Look, I mentioned Perkins, who's had such a great game. He's from Indianapolis. He got overlooked by Purdue and Indiana. Iowa gave him a shot, mostly recruited by mid-majors. You wonder if maybe he plays with a little chip on his shoulder in a game like this. I feel like he's played with a chip on his shoulder probably the last four or five games you watch on. He's been really good for these guys. Got the scoring average up to around 14 a game, over four assists a game for Tony Perkins. He's just been phenomenal though today. Here's Dix after the shot. Thank you, Barry's a 15 footer. Just such a fundamental but good play by Josh Dix. He's snaking that pick and roll. He's going to be a good player here, man. He gets more comfortable, gets further away from that broken leg he had seen here in high school. I, I like Josh Dix's game. Sophomore from Council Bluffs, Iowa, right on the Nebraska border. 
This time Smith. And a rebound to Sanford. Give Iowa credit because this has felt like it's kind of gotten away from them, but they, they are just hanging in here. And Perkins that time again disrupted by Edie. I said it a moment ago, but it's like the game has stayed in the stick. Yeah, it's just been the stick window. Yeah, it's just Purdue has kept them at arm's length. It was not led by 19, but right now it's 11. Edie. What a pass. Oh. Going back to the line where he's already attempted 13 free throws. Well, the ball has moved for Purdue at such a high level today. There's been no selfishness. I guess if, if you watch them often, there there rarely is. You got Braden Smith, you got Fletcher Lawyer. They know where they want to get the basketball. And they're also, when you're confident that you're going to get your looks and that the ball's going to come back to you and you've got an unselfish superstar like Purdue does, it, it's really easy to throw it in there because you know that when you're open, I mean, he's going to find you. When he's double teamed, he'll he'll give it up. But that unselfishness, part of the reason that they have the second rated offensive efficiency in the nation. And there's point number 30 for Big Zach E. Inside of five minutes. Josh Dix has the mismatch. He's given up a foot of height here. Great pass. Good finish from Perkins. That's what Iowa did at Minnesota, where when the ball went inside or off the dribble drive, and Josh Dix, that play doesn't happen if he's not playing off two feet. He's under control, gets to his jump stop, and then Tony Perkins does the rest off the ball. Iowa simply will not go away. And they get a steal. And then a foul on Braden Smith. That's the seventh team foul on Purdue, so we'll walk to the other end. Well, Braden Smith just kind of got caught a little bit too deep there. Rarely do you see him get himself into a situation like this, but nice help there from Sanford. Dick's on the ball, staying in the play. Second foul on Smith, and a one and one now for Josh Dix. Whoa, that's a friendly home bounce for Josh Dix. Josh Dix has been living right. <laughs> Numbers going up, you're, you're hitting the back iron straight up and straight down in. Dix moved into the lineup a couple of games ago. Patrick McCaffrey out with an ankle injury. They're coming to life in Iowa City. I know where this ball is going. I mean, Purdue is going to look to get Zach Eady a touch. A double screen for Smith. He's going to stop and fire. Off the mark. Eady corrals it. Back into the big fella. Look at those eyes, that vision. Purdue got a great oh, rebound by Lance Jones. My goodness, two big offensive boards. And now it's Jones for three. Another miss. Finally, Iowa has it. Good block out there by Tony Perkins. He kept Edie off the offensive boards there. Through Perkins with a big turn. Almost traveled. Now if they score here, it is going to get loud. Sanford missed it. He's got that quick trigger, but he left it a little short. Fifteen thousand are on their feet right now. That, that is not a great shot there by Fletcher Lawyer. Perkins around the arc. Here's Cricky. Trying to back down Gillis. Spinning. Needs some help. Still plenty of time to shoot. So this Iowa offense rarely goes to the end of the shot clock. Fade away. Off the mark for Josh Dix. Iowa's just not been able to capitalize. Finally gotten some stops. And I think Matt Painter wants to talk this over and draw something up at the media timeout. Both sides heavy breathing. 2.43 left. Number two, Purdue trying to hang on at Iowa City. He is one off his career high as Perkins of 25 points.
But Purdue was once up 19. That was 10 minutes ago. Iowa has made this a game, and the crowd is energized with 243 to play. Purdue, one of their last eight from the field. The Iowa defense has done their job. Question is out of the timeout. Can they get another stop? Braden Smith really close to that half-court line. He almost stepped on that line, avoided a turnover. Shot clock inside 10. Edie, two defenders there. Left it short. And the rebound to Freeman. He stepped through that double, but Iowa had multiple bodies, and Edie just looked a little bit off balance there. Now Tony Perkins. He wants that basketball. Starts to drive. Kicks it across the way. Sanford. Boy, he's got some good looks. Another high-quality flare screen. That did Sanford. Sanford. Yeah, he, he's made some tonight, but he's... Now just three of ten from three. Here in the last four minutes, he's got some high quality cracks at it. He makes them in bunches when he gets going. Certainly Iowa could have used that, but we're inside of two minutes. And here's number two, Fletcher Lawyer, giving it up. Edie wants it. Here comes the double. Shot clock at two. Jones got to put it up. Huge three for Lance Jones. He put his finger to his mouth. Try to silence 15,000 here in Iowa, and he did it. He missed it. He's at 38 for Purdue. Just think about him and Marcus Damask <laughs> playing together. I mean, that, that Southern Illinois team, they've got some players still. They're not they're having a nice season again, but, man, there's some talent down there. And Damask now starring at Illinois. 90 seconds to go, and Iowa with an uphill climb here. Sanford lost it. Tracks it down. He wants a timeout, and Rob Kuhnemann's going to grant it to him. It was a really nice defensive play by Fletcher Lawyer. And if you're wondering why it wasn't over and back, they say that it was deflected by Purdue, so Sanford a chance to track it down. He struggled a bit today for Purdue. This has been a little bit of a different type of Iowa attack this year. They don't shoot near the amount of threes. As we've seen past Fran McCaffrey teams get up, they're still incredibly efficient, play with tempo, play with pace, but they're not shooting near the amount that we've seen past Hawkeye teams do. And Cricky caught inside, finds Perkins. The verticality there by Edie is just so hard to finish over the top of. And now a minute to go, and this one slipping away. Some of the folks starting to head for the exits here. Purdue trying to sweep Iowa. Beating him December 4th in West Lafayette. And now in the driver's seat here with 53 ticks remaining. Iowa gave themselves a chance. You know, they, they needed to make a couple more of those shots when they were getting stops. But they, they did hang in. And Purdue had, had a real knockout punch there at, at times in the second half. And for Fran McCaffrey's club, look, you knew it would be tough for them here today, but they felt like this is one they could have used because they do not have a quad one victory this season. They're 0-5 in quad one opportunities with losses to Creighton, Oklahoma, Purdue, Iowa State, and Wisconsin. You think about the Big Ten this year, your quad one opportunities are the Badgers and, and their Illinois. There may be a few others, depending on where that net ranking falls, but not nearly the amount that we have seen in past seasons. Ooh, big collision. And they're going to get that on Purdue and Fletcher Lawyer, who cannot believe the call, but he just picked up his first personal. That's a good point. It's different. The conference obviously still very strong, but those quad one opportunities, not what they were a season ago. Meanwhile, Purdue, they've had no shortage of quad one wins. They already have six of them this year. Such a strong resume for Matt Painter's crew. And Perkins misses the free throw. Let's see if they even elect a foul here. And Jones will get tagged with 41.2 remaining. I think for Purdue, Robbie, that's one thing that and a lot of programs do this, Tom Izzo, several others. And Peter does not shy away from a tough non-conference schedule. Well, I, and certainly, you, depending on what your team is, you don't want to get beat down. But when you've got a group that is experienced and you feel like can handle it, and we've seen this with Tom Izzo forever. And I, I think now with the way the net ranking is, it, it does pay off to play 
high-level opponents. Yeah. And, but the thing is with Iowa, you've got a totally new team. You, know, you lose Chris Murray, you lose Robracha, you've got new roles. You don't want to get beat down either. So I, I do see the other side of it, but you're, you're right. Purdue has scheduled up, and, and the, the teams that they have beat the last three years, you're, you're talking about Duke, Villanova, Arizona, Alabama. I mean, you're talking about some of the best teams in college basketball, and, and their November and December wins are are pretty amazing considering where this program was when Matt Painter took it over. And they're going to get a road win here today in Iowa. Sweep the season series against the Hawkeyes. Purdue got up by as many as 19, and they cruised to an 84 to 70 win. And what more can you say about Zach Eady? 30 points and 18 rebounds in the win. He just does it again and again. And he's going to be the national player of the year. But Purdue got contributions from other people. Lance Jones was fabulous. Braden Smith ran the show. Really good win on the road for Purdue.